Uh, we are live. Uh, and I'm just going to say uh, good morning, I suppose, or uh, a continuous morning, I suppose, considering that none of us have actually slept yet. Continuously. Continuous good morning. Yeah. Is it good morning when you haven't yeah, slept? Yeah, it's, it's good morning. Not, I don't know. I mean, it's good yeah, enough. I have coffee. Yeah, it's, it's, a better, morning, it's a better morning than if you slept because we understand it. We understand the morning. I mean, we saw it I mean, come. That's true. Yeah. We're in it. We I, mean, are. I, I haven't seen the sunrise in a long time. No, I think it was amazing. No, I, think it was amazing. I mean, I, I was so surprised at how early it got light. Mm. And, and, and the night felt quite it short. It really did. Those three hours between my um, installation and yeah. now, yeah. they went by yeah. so quickly. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Really quickly. Oh, we've, got oh, we've got an old student joining us. She was a student of mine, I don't know, seven years ago. Okay. So, yeah, so that's nice. She was doing text, actually. Yeah. She did, a piece, she did a piece in the project room where she continually typed something. Well, I like the sound of that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was just an empty room with a desk and a typewriter. Yeah, you oh, that sounds like, brilliant. Yeah, I need to look at that at some point. And now I think she's teaching in uh, Costa Rica. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Okay, I think we're okay, so we're basically waiting for uh, Coral, are we? Coral said that they're going to the bathroom, so I'll just read out my um, uh, statement about what this workshop's supposed to entail. Hopefully it will, in hopefully it will go as planned. Um, so, uh, wait, you want to wait to do that? I mean, I could try and stream this now. I'm streaming. Oh, you are streaming. Yeah, oh, you are I, I said streaming. I was starting, oh, yeah. It's okay, don't worry. Um, I think they like just hearing us, uh, hearing us chat, maybe. Um, so yeah, I'll read out the uh, statement, which is, um, it's this workshop is called Right on the Spine, and it's a reading of our favourite books in our favourite nooks. Um, so this workshop takes place in a space that means uh, as much to us as the book we are reading from does. We start with a meditation and towards the end of the 20 minutes we start thinking of our favourite books. One that means a lot to us, one that, one that has inspired us, one that has changed us and preferably one that we have um, access to read from. So it can either be a physical copy or an online copy, but something we have access to. Um, and we will think about our favourite excerpts from those books that we have chosen, that the, the books that mean so much to us. Uh, and we, we will uh, read those excerpts. It doesn't have to be... It can be a small paragraph that you love, or it can be a couple pages you define how long you want to speak um, and then we take turns explaining the meanings behind our spaces our books our passages and the inspiration behind it all um, yeah and then we uh, discuss how we think the workshop went is I hope that's straightforward enough I mean I, I, I read it out thinking it might be complex for this early in the morning yeah and you, yeah. and you just tell us each time. step at yeah. a time. <laughs> I've already forgotten. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so, okay, so now uh, we're doing the welcome, and I just explained what's going on. Um, and we can go forth and do our meditation in a moment. And um, at the end of the meditation, we uh, we should... Uh, think about our favourite books um, and and those books need to be uh, important to us they they should have inspired us there has how to be long is, hmm? how, long is, how long is the meditation 20 minutes or shall we do less I'm just writing it in the chat, I'm just writing it in the chat. 
It's 6.15 now, should we do 15 minutes instead? Yeah, we'll do 15 minutes instead, yeah. So we can do 15-minute meditation. I'm actually going, because it's such a nice morning, I'm going to go outside and actually meditate on my yoga mat for a bit. Okay, so we can start our meditation now and meet up again at half past. I'm not going to show uh, myself much this morning because I don't feel well, obviously, because none of us have slept. But I just wanted to show you my meditation space. I'm on my yoga mat. I've got my phone with the timer. I've got a baby bird's nest right on my neighbour's roof. They cry more or less every hour on the hour. And most importantly, I've got my coffee. So, I'll see you all in 15 minutes. Rebecca, your mic is Yes, I thought I would let them hear the sound of the birds. Oh, okay, sorry. Oh, it's okay, okay don't sorry. worry.
And now we're back. How was that for everyone? Nice moment of... Nice moment of... A little of, 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 of some rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely some much needed rest. Before we move on, I just I'm curious now because I was just thinking about it. What did you all do for your meditation? Because I meditated, then uh, walked around the garden for a moment, just listening to the birds and uh, feeling the breeze, and then I actually did a few yoga poses to wake me up a bit. I just I'm curious to know what you you all did. I failed. I failed. I failed. Rebecca. I failed. Oh. Rebecca. I got, Rebecca. I got a coffee and sat pretty much upright and I do very drinking coffee. That's not failing. I had coffee <laughs> as well. I had coffee on the yoga mat. That's what I needed to do. I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'd fall asleep if I meditated. Yeah, that's why I only did it for a moment or two because I I would have actually fallen asleep. But the the meditation. The moment of meditation isn't literally to meditate, it's to do something yeah. meditative. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I find a lot of people, yeah. uh, uh, get when they get coffee, that's quite a meditative moment because all you're doing is just waiting and waiting for either the kettle to boil or the coffee machine to finish. And it's quite a relaxing moment. So I hope that went well. Um, and now uh, we go on to choose our books. So maybe that moment of meditation, maybe it revealed what book you might want to pick up and um, and to read from. I think I know which one, but we can take a, f uh, a few moments as long as we need to, really, um, to pick up, up pick out our book. Okay. Uh, Everyone, uh, let me know when you've got your book and you're all ready. Just in case I have it Just ready. Just in case I <laughs> have it ready. <laughs> I have mine ready as well so that's very good um, okay uh, do we need a moment to find the passage we want to read from as well or yes. 
Right. Yeah, yeah. We'll take a moment to look for the passage rather than for the book. I'm ready. I'm ready. Me as well. Me as well. I'm ready too. I'm ready too. Okay, that's great. Everyone's ready. Um, uh, before we talk about the books, like I said, this is um, reading books in our favourite nooks. So I don't know about you, but when I read, I like to get into a really comfortable position I have like at the moment I have cushions I have blankets surrounding me um, and I'm in the playroom in my house which is basically just another living room but it has um, it's smaller and it has the television that the only television that has Netflix so we, we still call it the playroom for when it was for our toys and games when my brother and I were really little um, and I'm sitting comfortably because this is where I like to read during the day this is where I did most of the recordings for right on the spine so I thought this was the perfect place to read my book from what about you all yeah I guess I do most of my yeah I guess I do most of my reading in bed um, tend to fall I asleep tend to fall asleep quite quickly if I do that. But I like to think more romantically that I'm going to say that I read this book, that I I read this book sitting in a nook on the side of a mountain, and I have done that, so I'm going to go with that. So it's more interesting than my bed. Don't worry, I do a lot of reading in, in bed as well, but on the side of a mountain sounds beautiful. I wish I, I, I wish I could do that more often. Yeah, when it's warm and you yeah, find a sheltered when it's warm spot, and you find a sheltered and you're spot sitting and you're on the sitting side, yeah. on the oh, side. That perfect. Yeah, nice mm. yeah. Coral, Domi, do you have a favourite nook? Mine is definitely by, Mine is the, definitely window by the window here, here in Aberystwyth because so I have the sea view so I can just sit on the floor and be in a window but the window seems so far away so right I'm now bed, so I'm in my bed open, but I have the curtain open the so I still can see the sea but having the comfort of my bed Um, and for me, it's like I think I cannot read anywhere else than in my bed. I mean, sometimes I can read in my uh, read when I'm in the car or something like this, and there's like a really long like journey. Uh, so yeah, I am now by my desk because of my laptop, but. Let's yes, I'm let's imagine I'm either still in my bed or I am on some cool, very long journey. We don't know where, it's just somewhere cool. <laughs> that sounds lovely. Um, okay then, uh, let's find out what books everyone's chosen. Um, does anyone want to go first or shall I? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I'll uh, go first. I chose Five on a Treasure Island by Enid Blyton because it is one of the oldest books in my house, I think. It used to belong to my dad and his dad and it's fallen apart. There are many pages that are, like I can literally pull them out. I will, I might dare to put on my camera for a second just to show you this beautiful book. Oh, there I am in the corner. Yeah, but it's old. It it doesn't look like much, but that's just how that that just shows uh, how original a copy it is. Because n nowadays they're all bright and colourful for the children to uh, perceive better. But uh, I actually I just noticed. I can't believe I never noticed this before. My dad wrote his name right on the front of the book in pencil. You can barely see it. That's brilliant. Oh, that's cute. Oh, that's Aww. cute. P. Budgeon. His name's Paul. So, yeah. Like I said, fallen apart. And this book is important to me because it just reminds me of when my dad would read stories to me. And my mine and my, fav my brother's favourite book was always Five on a Treasure Island, the very first book in the Famous Five series. It just brings... It's just so nostalgic for me. That's why I chose it. Shall I go next? Yes, of course, yes. Okay, well, my book is called okay, The Living Mountain, Living Mountain by Nan Shepherd, and I think I've actually introduced you so, yeah. to this. Mm. I gave my work a talk on my work a couple of years ago. It's a white book, book with a lovely line frame, with a, line with frame with a deer. single deer. Oh, so it's like a snowy white, so it's like landscape. A snowy white this landscape. This book has changed my whole, changed my whole art, uh, trajectory, art really. trajectory, really. But interestingly, when you find a book like this, you feel that you were on that path anyway, and then you just, anyway, you just you found it. Oh, writing. exactly. I found you know a book I mean? like that just a week or so ago. Yeah. I actually did it for one of my readings. Um, it's yes. It was yesterday now. Um, it was called "Still yeah. Writing: The Perils and Pleasures of a Creative Life," and it was like I was reading my autobiography. Yeah. It was just. It just yeah. fits so it's perfectly. Cool. It was as if I was. I had written it as. It. I just. I get that finding the perfect book. Yeah. It's. It's absolutely yeah. dense. It's. It's absolutely uh, with dense. Uh, with poetic prose, so almost every. every Every sentence is a beautiful, stunning. It's a writing, so it's 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 it's, it's, a, it's quite a weird book to read. And I've given lots of copies away and bought it for lots of people. And it's sad because I think I've given some away for the they noticed, so I'm never able to find my favourite bits again. But the other lovely um, turn to the story is that I put some of the quotes in final on the floor of the gallery of my Davis show in um, Oriel Davis two and, years ago um, and um, I think on Google you can have it come up where if somebody uses the name then you get notified so I was, I was contacted by her executor because we didn't have any children um, he was called Erlen um, Paulson I think and so in, it was fantastic. So I was able suddenly to talk to her and I went to visit able to talk to her and I went to visit in Edinburgh. Her, this guy that had everything of hers. Looking after the whole estate. Looking after the whole estate. And, he was, and, he, was whole estate. and he was passionate and interested in my project. So it was the most I wonderful kind of um Yeah, a so very 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 that sounds wonderful book. whenever i hear about someone a, a book that's special to someone else i automatically have an inclination to also read it so i might actually pick that book up at some point yeah. I will recommend it. And this copy is completely battered, and you know when a book's got completely wet, it's all curved and then 
Oh, oh absolutely. To the wears too. and tears make it even more personal. That's why I love buying secondhand books. Yeah. Mm. And I could also, yeah. also go on to say that, you know, I'm doing a whole project based on this on this book. So um, it's set in the Cairngorms where she used to walk between the walls. Uh, and that's amazing in itself because she was a woman walking in the mountains on her own. And I think back, there's a beautiful passage of these um, springs uh, where the, the river Dee and uh, the other river comes out. I can't remember what the other river is now. And I, and I made a, an exodus to get up to these springs three times. A couple of summers ago, and the clouds came down, the wind, it was like I couldn't make it, I had to keep turning back. It kept telling me to not go on any further, I was walking on my own, it was one of the highest mountains there. And so I couldn't get it, so the, finally the day that the cloud lifted, and I was up on this plateau with these beautiful falls that were so still, you could just see the tiniest bubbles in them. And then these reindeer roaming, not wild, but free at the top. But it was just exquisite. One of the best moments. Oh, it just sounds so magical here in it. Wow. Uh, it was magical, and then I went up again, and yeah. it wasn't as magical, you know, it was just, just, just that day, and just that, that moment, and having tried to get there already. Mm, it's that first time, time like, it's like, yeah. like the first time finishing a book, yeah. and you get that rush, of, uh, that exhilaration, like, that feeling of completeness as well, I suppose, yeah. and what it, yeah. Well, to feel like I've trodden her footsteps and I've gone to the, you know, to the place that she'd written this beautiful passage on was just so, so exciting. So that's, that's amazing, Miranda, that is such... Uh, it is amazing, thank you, yeah, it is, it was. And I'm going back, you know, the journey's not over. Much more to do, yeah. Okay, who wants to go next? Um, so the book that I've chosen, um, so the book that I I've chosen would show you, I would so show you, you wait a minute, um, so you can see, can see me, hello, um, Hi. you can see me, <laughs> hello, no, okay, this is the book that I've chosen, it's, it's gone by the wind, it's uh, gone by the wind, but it's the but it's version. the Slovak uh, version of it, so I'll be reading in Slovak today, so you will just have to <laughs> believe me. That's brilliant. What it is? Yeah. What it is? Um, this is my this is, favorite, this is my um, favorite book, book ever. I um, I read this maybe book like when 11, I was I don't know, maybe, maybe like eleven, I think, and maybe ten or eleven. And um, I remember after I read this, um, after I got read this um, I got a staff. <laughs> animal which, which I have here, here. <laughs> which is my oldest it's one. Rabbit. It's a um, it's a rabbit. And I remember um, well his name is Heathcliff which <laughs> is not from uh, this I book. But uh, I remember just having the issue being like, should I call him Heathcliff? Should I call him Red? Like which one which one will I decide for? And I was twelve having this issue. And and this book I, and, and this, I, I this is the copy that I got from my and grandma and when she passed old, away, and it's broken. very old. Also, very it's broken. it's basically broken. the twin to very my book. Broken. I think so. <laughs> I think <laughs> so. <laughs> the little sisters. Yeah, the, the little sisters. It, and yeah, and, and I love this, and I decided I'll be eventually reading literally the beginning because that's what I love the most when I start. Your books were going to the same primer school. Your books were going to the same primer school. They were sitting by the same desk. They were sitting by the same desk. Oh no. They're making, oh, the, history, yeah. They're making oh. the history, yeah. That's lovely, Dame. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so it's time for me. Okay, so it's time for me. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so uh, um, before I get okay, the so title, 
um, before I give you the title, here's a little backstory of why I would cho uh, I chose this book. Basically, I uh, I've had my my book ready uh, before the workshop has started because I was thinking that I might have trouble with finding mm. like uh, one book could, uh, like bring in uh, that I could uh, I like bring in because I have this problem that a lot of the books, that I, really that, that, lot of the books that I really me, enjoy and I don't mean a lot to me of, I so don't I have copy to, of like, so I wouldn't be able to like get it, like, <laughs> so get it and read it maybe I should so get I was looking maybe I should get something else from like the bookshop see if something is like I remember fondly, but I kind of want thinking, to read, uh, have something. But in I kind English of want to read, want uh, have something in English because I want you to understand. But at the same time, most of the time I was reading books. In Polish. They were so, in Polish. So like, what so, do I do? What do I do? So it's like, what do I do? What do I do? Ended up with a book. And ended up. With a book uh, my mom brought that, one day to my uh, uh, my to mom my room. brought one day and to my uh, to like my room I was in middle school and, and it was like I was in middle school and my mom wanted me to read books in English so to practice my English like so she would come up with like, like read it any book in English and she would be like read it and translate the words and learn the vocabulary what I did with my German and Italian books so um I so, up, um, uh, I ended up two, uh, with this uh, two language version, uh, like two language version. Really like it's the book that English literally Polish, is translated in side. both English oh, and Polish nice. side by side. Uh, and it is the house at Pooh Corner. And it is the house at Pooh Corner. <laughs> Lovely. <Aww. laughs> I actually. Uh, I actually, I don't know if you know that, but I really, really, really love Winnie the Pooh. When I was a child, like, uh, when, when I was younger, we used when to I was have, a child, like, like, when I was younger, VHS we used to have, like, like these VHS tapes with, like, different, and different and films so and stuff and stories, and I was so obsessed with them. And whenever I see any Winnie the Pooh film now in TV, I always get emotional. It always yes. makes my day. We need a so poo. It is. yes, <laughs> we need oh, a poo. once again it that is. it's just a perfect book because I am. Uh, you know I'm a Disney fan, but I'm also a massive Winnie the Pooh fan. I've got a toy, uh, like a cuddly Eeyore that I have upstairs, normally on my bed, um, but at the moment he's wa he's waiting for me in my closet because my installation has taken over my room. Um, but yeah, I normally have him on the bed, and I've had him since I was about five or six I think um, because uh, my mum's friend who lives in Australia she bought him uh, for me years ago and I've had him ever since yeah so I I definitely I, I love all these choices uh, so much and I love the backstory behind them that's what makes them so special um, does anyone want to go first or like do they want to get it over with I mean I, uh, I think I we just... could go in the order I, yeah yeah uh, I think I we could go in the order yeah 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 I I, like I wanted to suggest the same thing <laughs> like in the same <laughs> yeah. order we keep yeah. going in. yeah okay um how about uh, me, Miranda, Domi, and Coral again, then. Okay. Uh, we'll go in that order, and like I said, I am reading uh, from uh, Five on a Treasure Island, and I was thinking that I would read the first chapter, because like I said to Domi, you can't go wrong with the beginning, but then I realised you don't meet my favourite character in that chapter, you don't meet her until chapter two. So I'm going to read chapter two, it's only ten pages and it's really big writing and there's illustrations and everything. Um, so yeah, I'll be reading chapter two, The Strange Cousin. Okay. The children's aunt had been watching the, uh, for the car. She came running out of the old wooden door as soon as she saw it draw up on the, out, uh, draw up outside. The children liked the look of her at once. 
Welcome to Kirin, she cried. Hello, all of you. It's lovely to see you. And what big children! There were kisses all around, and then the children went into the house. They liked it. It felt old and rather mysterious somehow, and the furniture was old and very beautiful. Where's Georgina? asked Anne, looking round for her unknown cousin. Oh, the naughty girl, I told her to wait in the garden for you, said her aunt. Now she's gone off somewhere. I must tell you, children, you may find George a bit difficult at first. She's always been one on, uh, one on her own, you know. And at first she may not like you being here, but you mustn't take any notice of that. She'll be all right in a short time. I was very uh, glad for George's sake that you were able to come. She badly needs other children to play with. Do you call her George? asked Anne in surprise. I thought her name was Georgina. So it is, said her aunt. But George hates being a girl, and we all have to call her George, as if she were a boy. The naughty girl won't answer if we call her Georgina. The children thought that Georgina sounded rather exciting. They wished she would come, but she didn't. Their uncle Quentin suddenly appeared instead. He was a most extraordinary, extraordinary looking man, very tall, very dark, and with a rather fierce frown on his wide forehead. Hello, Quentin, said Daddy. It's a long time since I've seen you. I hope these three won't disturb you very much in your work. Quentin is working on a very difficult book, said Aunt Fanny. But I've given him a room all to himself on the other side of the house, so I don't expect he'll be disturbed. Their uncle looked at the three children and nodded to them. The frown didn't come off his face, and it all felt a little scared, and were glad that he was to work in another part of the house. Where's George? he said in a deep voice. Gone off somewhere, said Aunt Fanny, vexed. I told her she was to stay here and meet her cousins. She wants spanking, said Uncle Quentin. The children couldn't quite make out whether he was joking or not. Well, children, I hope you have a good time here and maybe you will knock a little common sense into George. There was no room at Kieran Cottage for Mother and Daddy to stay the night, so after a hurried supper, they left to stay at a hotel in the nearest town. They would drive back to London immediately after breakfast the next day. So they said goodbye to the children that night. Georgina still hadn't appeared. I'm sorry we haven't seen Georgina, said Mother. Just give her our love and tell her we hope she'll enjoy playing with Dick, Julian and Anne. Then Mother and Daddy went. The children felt a little bit lonely as they saw a big black car uh, disappear around the corner of the road, but Aunt Fanny took them upstairs to show them their bedrooms, and they soon forgot to be sad. The two boys were to sleep together in a room with slanting ceilings at the top of the house. It had a marvellous view of the bay. The boys were really delighted with it. Anne was to sleep with Georgina in a smaller room whose windows looked over the moors at the back of the house, but one side window looked over the sea which pleased Anne very much. It was a nice room, and red roses nodded their heads at the window. I do wish Georgina would come, said Anne said to her aunt. I want to see what she's like. Well, she's a funny little girl, said her aunt. She can be very rude and naughty, but she's kind at heart, very loyal and absolutely truthful. Once she makes friends with you, she will always be your friend. But she finds it very difficult indeed to make friends, which is a great pity. Anne suddenly yawned. The boys frowned at her because they knew what would happen next, and it did. Poor Anne, how tired you are. You must all go to bed straight away and have a good long night. Then you'll wake up quite fresh tomorrow, said Aunt Fanny. Anne, you are an idiot, said Dick crossly when his aunt had gone out of the room. You know quite well what grown-ups think as soon as we yawn. I did not want I did want to go down to the beach for a while. I'm so sorry, said Anne. Somehow I couldn't help it. And anyway, you're yawning now, Dick and Julian too. So they were. They were as sleepy as could be, with their long drive in the open air. Secretly, all of them longed to cuddle down in bed and shut their eyes. I wonder where Georgina is, said Anne, when she said goodnight to the boys and went to her own room. Isn't it queer, not waiting, for, not waiting to welcome us, and not coming in to supper, and not even in yet? After all, she's sleeping in my room. Goodness knows what time she'll be in. All the three children were fast asleep before Georgina came up to bed. They didn't hear her open Anne's door. They didn't hear her get undressed and clean her teeth. They didn't hear the creak of the bed as she got into it. They were so tired that they heard nothing at all until the sun awoke them in the next morning. When Anne awoke, she couldn't 
uh, at first think where she was. She lay in her little bed and looked up at the slanting ceiling and at the, and at the red roses that nodded at the window and suddenly remembered all in a rush where she was. I'm at Kieran Bay and it's the holidays, she said to herself and screwed up her legs with joy. Then she looked over at the other bed. In it uh, lay the fi figure of another child curled up under the bedclothes. Anne could just see the top of a curly head, that, and that was all. When the figure stirred a little, Anne spoke. I say, are you Georgina? The child in the opposite bed sat up and looked across at Anne. She had very short curly hair, almost as short as a boy's. Her face was burned a dark brown with the sun, and her very blue eyes looked as bright as forget-me-nots in her face. But her mouth was rather sulky, and she had a frown like her father's. No, she said, I'm not Georgina. Oh, said Anne in surprise. Then who are you? I'm George, said the girl. I shall only answer if you call me George. I hate being a girl. I won't be. I don't like doing all the things that girl I don't like doing the things that girls do. I like doing the things that boys do. I can climb better than any boy and swim faster too. I can sail a boat as well as any fisher boy on the coast. You're to call me George, then I'll speak to you. But I shan't if you don't. Oh, said Anne, thinking that her new cousin was most extraordinary. All right, I don't care what I call you. George is a nice name, I think. I don't like I don't much like Georgina anyway. You look like a boy. Do I really? said George, the frown leaving her face for a moment. Mother was awfully cross with me when I cut my hair short. I had hair all round my neck. It was awful. The two girls stared at one another for a moment. Don't you simply hate being a girl? asked George. No, of course not, said Anne. You see, I do like pretty frocks, and I love my dolls. And you can't do that if you're a boy. Pooh! Fancy bothering about with pretty frocks said George in a scornful voice. And dolls, well you are a baby, that's all I can say. Anne felt offended. You're not very polite, she said. You won't find that my brothers take much notice of you if you act like you knew everything. They're real boys, not pretend boys like you. Well, if they're going to be nasty to me, I shan't take any notice of them, said George, jumping out of bed. I didn't want any of you to come, uh, I didn't want any of you to come anyway. Interfering with my life here. I'm quite happy on my own. Now I've got to pick up with a silly girl who likes frocks and dolls and two stupid boy cousins. Anne felt that they had to make that they had made a very bad beginning. She had said no more, but got dressed herself. She put on a grey shorts and a red jersey. George put on shorts too and a boy's jersey. Just as they were ready, the boys hammered on the door. Aren't you ready? Is Georgina there? Cousin George, cousin Georgina, come out and see us. George flung open the door and marched out with her head high. She took no notice of the two surprised boys at all. She stalked downstairs. The other three children looked at one another. She won't answer if you call her Georgina, explained Anne. She's awfully queer, I think. She says she didn't want us to come because we will interfere with her. She laughed at me and was rather rude. Julian put his arm around Anne, who looked a bit doleful. Cheer up, he said. You've got uh, us to stick up for you. Come on down for breakfast. And I'll leave it there because I think I've made it very clear why I like um, George so much. She is such an amazing character and especially for the time, uh, she was quite controversial, obviously, because she was a girl who didn't want to be a boy and she didn't like girly things and that's why I fell in love with her immediately. And obviously, uh, my next favourite character is Timmy, who is their dog, uh, which unfortunately we don't meet in this chapter, but uh, I thought I'd leave it there anyway. Is anyone, uh, is anyone ready to go next? I'll go next. Thanks, Rebecca. I've, I've read all those. I'll go next. Thanks, Rebecca. I've, I've read all those books to uh, Yaron recently, and so that's pretty uh, familiar to me. And we watched all the DVDs about ten, ten times over. So okay. So mine. I'm just going to read you. So this book has got a fantastic um, introduction by Robert McFarlane, who's also a brilliant uh, writer, travel writer. So uh, she first wrote this book uh, sometime between the wars and then it just got put in the bottom of a cupboard, a wardrobe, 
um, and then it was published in 1977, I can't remember by who, and nothing happened to it. And then when Robert McFarlane found it, and I can't again remember how he came across it and wrote this introduction, now it's become this big best international bestseller. And just going back to the, to the executor, he, he was a journalist for The Guardian and had retired, and then suddenly this second publication of the book became so popular that he's had to stop being retired and become a full-time executor. So that's quite nice. Well, I don't know how nice it is for him. So this is the uh, very tiny excerpt from Robert McFarlane's introduction, and then I'm going to read a, book, a bit from her. Um, from the book. Her book is a hymn to living all the way through, to touching, tasting, smelling and hearing the world. If you manage this, then you might walk out of the body and into the mountain, such that you become, briefly, a stone, the soil of the earth. And at that in. point then, well, that is all, then right, one has been and that in. All that is all, right, Shepherd. And that all should be heard not diminutively, vastly, apologetically, but expansively, vastly. And then this is a section from her writing. And then this is a section this from her of focus writing. In the eye. This changing of focus in the eye, moving the eye itself when looking at things that do not move, deepens one's sense of outer reality. Then static things may be caught in the very act of becoming. By so simple a matter, too, as altering the position of one's head, a different kind of world may be made to appear. Lay the head down, or better still, face away from what you look at and bend with straddled legs till you see your world upside down. How new it has become, from the close by sprigs of heather to the most distant fold of the land, each detail stands erect in its own validity. In no other way have I seen of my own unaided sight that the earth is round as I watch it arches its back and each layer of landscape bristles though bristles is a word of too much commotion for it details are no longer part of a grouping in a picture of which I am the focal point the focal point is everywhere nothing has reference to me the looker this is how the earth must see itself and that really is the essence of what i'm trying to capture in my work through the crawling i now maybe through the staring so that the idea that the two oak trees were looking at themselves and that we weren't the focal point of that street those streams that i did this morning that's kind of what what i'm trying to get to uh, looking at it, looking at it again without us in the way, yeah. as it were. That was lovely, Miranda. That's me done. I, I, I really, I want to read the book even more now. I especially think that Dommy would relate to this book from. I especially think that Dommy really would relate to this book from the workshop that we did. This is really the the idea of embodying through the body, understanding through the body. Yes, I can definitely see it. Definitely. Yes, I can definitely see um, it. Definitely. And also, Miranda, if you could put the, um, the title in the chat, oh, yes, that would because be brilliant. I, haven't, um, I haven't wrote it down, and I would like to come back to the book. Okay, so I think I'll Take over. I okay, so I think I'll with, um, take over. I 
just want to start with, um, I'll thank you for the title, Miranda. Um, I want to start with why I also wanted to chose a book in Slovak is also because of my parents, because they've been watching majority of this live stream, although they can't understand a thing, really. And even now, when we had like five minutes delay, my mom called me being like, oh, is something wrong? I, I can't see anything yet. So <laughs> which is just... She's just, they're so you'll invested be, in this and they're supporting us so much, so you'll be, you'll be able to so understand something for a few minutes. Gone with the wind. Um, so this is the beginning of Gone the, with the Wind, the introduction um, the and it's basically the, and the, the introduction to the Carlet farm of Ohara and, and um, to the main characters, Scarlett so and her um, admirers, so... Let's begin. Kapitola prvá. Scarlett Oharová nebola krásavica, ale chlapi si to zriedka uvedomovali, keď boli pod vplyvom jej čara. Tak ako dvojčatá tar- tarletonovci. V jej tvári sa prinásilne miešali jemné črty matky, ktorá pochádzala z pobrežnej aristokratickej rodiny francúzského pôvodu s ťažkopádnymi čitami do írského oca. Bola to však zaujímavá tvár s ostrou bradou a hranatými čelusiami. Oči mala bledozelné, bez stopy hnedého zafarbenia, olemované čiernymi myhálnicami, na konci trochu prehnutými. Husté čierne obrvy tvorili nápadnú krivku na magnóliovo-bielej pleti, ktorú si južná krásavica tak vážila a starostlivo chránila závojmi a sieťkami pred horúcim georgijským slnkom. Bol to pekný obrázok, ako tak sedela so Stuartom a Brentom Tarletonovcami v hladnej tvoni verandy na otcovej farme Tare toho jasného aprílového popoludňa roku 1861. 12 metrov kvietkavého zeleného mušelínu jej nový šiat splýval v mekých vlnách po obručiach jej krinolíny a vo farbe presne ladil s zelenými marokénovými črievicami s plachými opetkami, ktoré jej otec nedávno priniesol z Atlanty. V šatách dokonale vynikal jej 44 cm drie, najtenší v troch okresoch a priliehavý životík sprevádzala na dne prevádzal ňadra na jej 16 rokov už dobre vyvinuté. No napriek prostrete jej šiat, skromnému a hladkému účesu, stiahnutému zadu do úzla a, polo- a nehybnej polohe drobných bielých rúk, zložených v lone, je práva osobnosť z neho stále celkom utajená. Oh God, it's very hard to read in Slovak. It's so hard. It's very tough. Okay, so that was the beginning of the the um, farm of Ohara Tara, and it was the description of the the main character Scarlett, um, as she had. Uh, um, her face was a mixture of her of her mom uh, who had a French background and her Irish father and it was very um, rather um, a rough uh, face but it was still beautiful and that her personality would always work as a charm to her admirers yeah so that was it I haven't read this book for so long. I don't think I've ever read this book in English, and I would really like to just to see how I feel about that. But it's great to it read something in Slovak again. To hear you read in that, I I love it so much when I hear people read in their uh, mother tongues because it just reminds us of all our differences. And honestly, it was just beautiful. Listen to it. I I knew the beginning. I didn't understand the words and I can't remember it off by heart but I knew what was happening and it was just beautiful thank you so much Domi yes I always think about you when thinking about foreign languages because you speak so many yes, I always think <laughs> about you when you thinking about foreign yes, languages I, no, because you speak I, so many I don't speak so I don't finally think something you don't speak <laughs> I, of all the languages I speak that, that's the one I don't think I've ever tried hmm 
maybe that's a challenge for the future. Well, I won't be too much of help. I was struggling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't be too much of help. I was struggling <laughs> reading. Honestly, I would suggest just learn any Slavic language. Honestly, I would suggest just like learn any <laughs> Slavic language and you can understand yes, like yeah, at definitely. least partially all the yeah, ones. Really, <laughs> because like, uh, now yeah, that Domi like, yeah, yeah, now that Domi was reading, I couldn't like, understand oh, yeah, like everything, but that. like a few sentences, I some I words. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah. I know and that. And you get the concept, right? You get the overall oh gosh, meaning of yeah. what is being what is being told. Oh gosh, my dad sort of has like this work. story. He was once uh, on like this uh, sort of like work, uh, work uh, tour or something, and he was in uh, this hotel, and there were people from Czechoslovak, uh, Czech, sorry, Czech Republic. Uh, and, and, and obviously it was him who was Polish, and the, the guys were trying to talk to him. Uh, in English, and my dad just looked at them, and he was like, "Just, just please speak in Czech. I will speak to you in Polish. We might put some Russian in it, and I bet we will understand more." I don't know English that well, please. And they managed to communicate, so that's that's a fun fact about that. Yeah, like when you were talking about that, that just reminds me of um, uh, my ability to speak. Spanish and Italian because I learned Spanish in primary school but then I started studying Italian in in high school um, and now I know more Italian than I do Spanish and just like those two languages like really helped me because obviously the Latin languages um, so yeah it's just really interesting how much you can understand just by knowing a little bit of one language you can understand another Yeah, it's it's really good uh, to like learn. A little yeah, bit. it's it's really good so I really uh, to like learn a little bit. I really love when there are like language families because you can really. It's just easier to communicate if you know at least one language from like a language family. Uh, but now uh, that you uh, we went to this language. Thing. Uh, now I, I am wondering, since I have like two language, language version of this short. book, so, like, uh, should I try maybe I try for uh, like my fragment is short, so like it wouldn't in take long. English. I could try reading it in Polish okay. first and then reading brilliant. it in yeah. English, so you yeah, could we definitely have the time. understand. Okay, so, so yes, so do both. Yeah. Okay, so 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 I can do it. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so, so I can do it. Um, just let me find a fragment. Okay. It's just like harder to find a fragment on one, on, like, in one page, uh, in one version, because they're not always all the same, of the pages. Uh, okay, um, um, I have it. Prosiaczek podszedł trochę bliżej, by zobaczyć, co kłopo uchy robi. Przed nim, na ziemi, leżały trzy patyki, w które kłopo uchy się wpatrywał. Dwa z nich stykały się ze sobą w jednym końcu, a rozchodziły w drugim. A trzeci patyk leżał w poprzek na tamtych. Prosiaczek pomyślał, że może jest to jakaś pułapka. Ach, po połóżku, zaczął znowu. Właśnie, czy to maleńki prosiaczek? Zapytał kłapołuchy, wciąż patrząc uparcie na swoje patyki. Tak, kłapołóżku. I właśnie, czy wiesz, co to jest? Nie, rzekł prosiaczek. To jest A. O. Rzekł prosiaczek. Nie o, tylko a, skarcił go kłapołuchy surowo. Czyż ty nie słyszysz? Albo może ci się zdaje, że masz więcej wykształcenia od Krzysia? 
i podszedł jeszcze tak, bliżej. Tak, powiedział prosiaczek. Nie, Krzyżu poprawił się bardzo bliżej, szybko i podszedł jeszcze bliżej. A, chyba, że ktoś na nie Krzyż wlezie, powiedział, że to jest A i to jest A. Prosiaczek chyba, że ktoś na nie wlezie, dodał kłopołuchy surowo. Prosiaczek gwałtownie odskoczył w tył i powąchał swoje fiołki. Czy wiesz, co znaczy A, maleńki prosiaczku? Nie, kłapołuszku, nie wiem. Otóż A oznacza naukę, oznacza wykształcenie, oznacza wszystkie te rzeczy, o których ani ty, ani puchatek nie macie pojęcia. O, rzekł znowu prosiaczek. Chciałem powiedzieć, czy tak? Wyjaśnię szybko. Więc słuchaj, co ci powiem. Przychodzą tu rozmaici do tego lasu i mówią, to jest tylko kłapołuchy i to się nie liczy. Chodzą tu i tam i mówią ha, ha, ale czy ci ludzie wiedzą cokolwiek o A? Nic nie wiedzą. Dla nich to są po prostu trzy patyki, lecz dla wykształconych, a więc nie dla rozmaitych puchatków i prosiaczków. Jest to wielkie i wspaniałe A. Nie coś takiego, na co każdy może wleść i połamać. Prosiaczek cofnął się gwałtownie i rozejrzał się wokoło, szukając pomocy. Przyszedł królik, rzekł z zadowoleniem. Jak się masz, króliku? Królik zbliżył się z ważną miną, skinął głową prosiaczkowi i powiedział A, kłopołuchy, takim głosem jakby za dwie minuty miał powiedzieć do widzenia. Otóż jest pewna sprawa, o którą chciałem cię zapytać, kłopołuchy, mówił królik. Czy nie wiesz, co się dzieje z Krzysiem w ostatnich dniach przed południem? A co to jest, na co ja teraz patrzę? spytał kłopołuchy, wciąż patrząc na to. Trzy patyki, odparł szybko królik. Widzisz, powiedział kłopołuchy do prosiaczka, po czym zwrócił się do królika. Teraz odpowiem ci na twoje pytanie. Szedł uroczyście. Dziękuję ci, powiedział królik. Chcesz wiedzieć, co robi Krzyś co dzień przed południem? Uczy się, kształci się, wyczerpuje. Zdaje się, że to jest słowo, którego użył. Wyczerpuje, czy czerpie wiedzę. Na mój skromny sposób, ja też, jeśli użyłem właściwego wyrazu, Robię to, co on. To na przykład jest... A, powiedział królik. Ale nie bardzo udane. Ale mniejsza o to. Muszę już wracać i zawiadomić wszystkich. Kłopołuchy spojrzał na swoje patyki, a potem na prosiaczka. Co królik powiedział? Że co to jest? Zapytał. A, odparł prosiaczek. Czyś ty mu to powiedział? Nie, kłapołuszku, nie powiedziałem. Zdaje mi się, że on już przedtem wiedział. Sam z siebie. Wiedział? Myślisz, że to jest taka rzecz, o której wie królik? Aha, kłapołuszku, on jest mądry, ten król. Mądry, zawołał kłapołuchy z pogardą, ciężko kładąc kopyto na swych trzech patykach. Wykształcenie, powiedział z goryczą, skacząc na swych sześciu patykach. Czym jest wiedza? Zapytał, podrzucając swe dwanaście patyków w powietrze. Rzeczą, którą posiadł królik. Ha! Myślę, zaczął prosiaczek nerwowo. Nie myśl, rzekł kłopołuchy. Myślę, że fiołki są bardzo milutkie, powiedział prosiaczek. To mówiąc położył swój mały bukiecik przed kłopołuchem i prędko uciekł. Ok, uh, so that was it in Polish. And now, go back to English. Piglet came a little closer to see what it was. Eeyore had three sticks on the ground and was looking at them. Two of the sticks were touching at one end, but not at the other, and the third stick was laid across them. Piglet thought that perhaps it was a trap of some kind. Oh, Eeyore, he began again. I just... Is that a little piglet? said Eeyore, still looking hard at his sticks. Yes, Eeyore, and I... Do you know what it is? No, said Piglet. It's an A. 
Oh, said Piglet. Not O. A, said Eeyore severely. Can't you hear? Or do you think you have more education than Christopher Robin? Yes, said Piglet. No, said Piglet very quickly, and he came closer still. Christopher Robin said it was an A, and an A it is, until somebody treads on it, Eeyore added sternly. Piglet jumped backwards hurriedly and smelled at his violets. Do you know what A means, little Piglet? No, Eeyore, I don't. It means learning. It means education. It means all the things that you and Pooh haven't got. That's what A means. Oh, said Piglet again. I mean, does it? He explained quickly. I'm telling you. People come and go in this forest, and they say, it's only ear, so it doesn't count. They walk to and fro, saying, ha ha, but do they know anything about A? They don't. It's just free sticks to them, but to the educated. Mark this, little piglet, to the educated, not meaning poos and piglets. It's a great and glorious A, not, he added, just something that anybody can come and breathe on. Piglet stepped back nervously and looked around for help. Here's Rabbit, he said gladly. Hello, Rabbit. Rabbit came up importantly, nodded to Piglet and said, Ah, here, in the voice of one who would be saying, Goodbye in about two more minutes. There's just one thing I wanted to ask you, Eeyore. What happens to Christopher Robin in the mornings nowadays? What's this that I'm looking at? Said Eeyore, still looking at it. For sticks, said Rabbit promptly. You see? Said Eeyore to Piglet. He turned to Rabbit. I will now answer your question, he said solemnly. Thank you, said Rabbit. What does Christopher Robin do in the mornings? He learns. He becomes educated. He interrogates. I think that is the word he mentioned, but I may be referring to something else. He interrogates knowledge. In my small way, I also, if I have the word right, am. Am doing what he does. That for instance, it's an A, said Robert, but not a very good one. Well, I must get back and tell the others. Ear looked at his sticks and then he looked at Piglet. What did Robert say it was? He asked. An A, said Piglet. Did you tell him? No, Ear, I didn't. I expect he just knew. He knew? You mean this A thing is a thing Rabbit knew? Yes, Ear, he's clever, Rabbit is. Clever, said Ear scornfully, putting a foot heavily on his free sticks. Education, said Ear bitterly, jumping on his six sticks. What is learning? asked Ear as he kicked his twelve sticks into the air. A thing. Rabbit knows? Ha! A thing, began Piglet nervously. Don't, said Eeyore. I think violets are rather nice, said Piglet. And then he laid his bunch in front of Eeyore and scampered off. Uh, so, so yeah, that, that was, was it. I absolutely love that. I just closed my eyes and listened because I, I haven't heard... Uh, Winnie the Pooh stories. I mean, I've watched the films recently enough for, for, the, for nostalgia purposes, but I haven't listened to the stories in so long. That was just amazing, and especially to hear it in two different languages. It was great. Thank you, Coral. Thank you. Um, 
I also close my eyes and just listen. Which it was, was great. Thank you, Coral. Um, Thank you. Um, kind of tricky. <laughs> I also <laughs> close my eyes and, and just listen, and which was. Um, but which you, um, was kind of tricky <laughs> because I was like I can't fall asleep <laughs> when I close my eyes for too long. Would, but thank um, you. Um, Winnie the Pooh is, is a story um, that my friend Petty would um, would quote quite a lot, and Petty memory, is so um, a friend of mine who passed today, away, and I'm so making all my recent so work in his energy, memory. So. Much life. Because listening to the story today also, when I'm so tired it just gave me so much energy and so much life because I just imagined him also oh, just so just saying all these story. things he he loved so this story yeah that was oh, beautiful I'm so Domi. glad to hear it Domi. The beautiful Domi as well I'm so yeah. glad it, it made you feel this way mm. okay so we have another half an hour which is uh, more than I anticipated hmm? Uh, we have more than half an hour, which is more than I anticipated because I thought maybe a few more people would join, but that's fine. Um, but what I've written down for the rest of this is um, we discuss how these books have inspired us and we discuss how the workshop went. Um, but I also, now thinking about it, if we want to use up a bit more time, we could also talk about just book, other books in general that have inspired us and inspired us to create to write, to draw, just uh, let's just talk about books in general because who doesn't love talking about books? Yeah, that's a great idea. Yes, that's a great idea. Okay, so um, I'll start by saying um, some of the books that have inspired me for a long time have obviously been uh, a Harry Potter series, The Hobbit, some classic fantasy stories, um, but also more recently than that uh, there are some books that I hold very dear to my heart um, and that is definitely books by Matt Haig, Reasons to Stay Alive and Notes on a Nervous Planet. They're both auto, uh, autobiographies and self-help books and the first one, Reasons to Stay Alive, um, I read when I was in a very dark place and I've also used that both these books as, um, as a practitioner research because of how much they influenced me. Um, and honestly, when I first read Reasons to Stay Alive, it reminded me um, how much I did want to be alive. It, it honestly saved me uh, from a lot more hurt, and for that I'm eternally grateful. And um, Notes on a Nervous Planet, I sent everyone in our class an excerpt on time, which was um, a really powerful... Um, chapter for me because it just it explained a lot of the things we were already looking at uh, in our practice and just had some truly interesting ideas about how we either waste time or we use it uh, pra uh, what's it called not practically uh, how we use it creatively for example um, so those are some books have really impacted me recently and along those lines also All the Bright Places, um, Girl in Pieces, uh, one book recently was um, The Binding, that was a beautiful book and it's a story about books uh, that are actually magical objects, I wrote about that one in my Write on the Spine blog and also um, before the coffee gets cold, which is a short story, which is a short story, um, or a collection of short stories about a coffee shop where you can go back in time um, and maybe meet a lost love or something like that. Uh, and you, obviously, the idea is that you have to leave before the coffee gets cold, and that was just such a beautiful book. Um, does anyone else want to go? Wow, Rebecca, that was beautiful. Oh my god, thank you again 
for being so wow, real and honest. Wow, Rebecca, that was beautiful. So oh my god, thank you, you and again for being so, so raw and honest. And so I'm just so proud of you and, ago, and your journey. And, and, you and I'm so glad that I get to see it, that I and, and got to meet you years ago, a few years ago. And now I see you now. And it's just amazing. And and the last story yeah, that you I'll mentioned, send you, um, the, the before the coffee gets cold, the called, name wow, of that book and the author. But <laughs> what you just said almost made me cry. Um, thank you so much. That means a lot to me, and I'm so glad I met all of you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, a book that. Yes, 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 Miranda, go. Um, a book that I'm missing. Yes, yes, Miranda, go. Well, I, I've just picked up this book. I mean, I, I, it would take me weeks to find a, a, a section that I want to read, so I'll just dive in. But this is a book, um, it's called Writings, a Schrift and German, uh, a German catalogue on the uh, artist Agnes Martin. Don't know if you, any of you have heard of Agnes Martin. She was a favourite artist of mine in my early, well, like about the same time as you, where you're at now in your education, which I was at in 1992, <laughs> which sounds a long time ago to you, I'm sure. So this was a book that was published to accompany the exhibition Agnes Martin's Paintings and Works on Paper from 1960 to 1989. And I just used to dive into this book and just swim, really, because I just used to feel that every part of it was exquisite so there there's just it starts off with just little lots of little tiny um, clusters of words so I'll just read some of them the silence on the floor of my house is all the questions and all the answers that have been known in the world the sentimental furniture threatens the peace the reflection of a sunset speaks loudly of days. That actually reminds me of a, the film I made of, of my marble quarry walk where I have right in the middle of the film uh, a silent, I think there were three stills of the light on the marble floor of the church in the middle of the town. And it also reminds me of the light in my dad's house that I filmed after he died, which I'm yet to make a film with. Another section, artwork is only a tintering of what it attempts to represent to the artist and to responsive observers. It is not beneficial, nothing is gained from it, and it does not tell the truth. It is enjoyed or not according to the condition of the observer, a very small gesture of exhalation. The struggle of existence, non-existence is not my struggle. The struggle of existence, non-existence is not my struggle. The establishment of the perfect state, not mine to do. Being outside that struggle, I turn to perfection as I see it in my mind. And as I also, and as I also see it with my eyes, even in the dust. Although I do not represent it very well in my work, all seeing the work, being already familiar with the subject, are easily reminded of it. <clears throat> we cannot even imagine how to be humble. I can see humility, delicate and white. It is satisfying just by itself. And trust, absolute trust, a gift, a precious gift. I would rather think of humility than anything else. Humility, the beautiful daughter, she cannot do either right or wrong. She does not do anything. 
All of her ways are empty, infinitely light and delicate. She treads an even path, sweet, smiling, uninterrupted, free. This is so nice reading this. I haven't read this for a very long time. Kim James Williams, who's doing the conclusion with us, borrowed this book once. And she she looked it up on Google and told me it was worth about three hundred pounds, which was kind of a shock. Anyway, I'm going to end there because it kind of goes on on like that. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you. Um, the book that I would say. Thank you, Miranda. Thank you. Um, the book that I would say um, has inspired me, or maybe the author, is definitely Edgar Allan Poe. He is probably my absolute favorite one. I really like the classic literature, like Hemingway and Bukowski. But Edgar Allan Poe, it just fits everything, every single story that I've ever read. It has everything, and I could read them um, all over again, and it still feels like I'm reading them for the first time. It's great that it has the horror essence to it, which I really love, and also his stories are rather short, which is great because I like to read something really short. So he is he's also someone who um, I only read in uh, his book in translation his stories I've never read anything in English I think or maybe just little 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 scraps of um, of his story so definitely he is he is one of the ones that I would always come back to and I also was thinking about reading uh, um, now just today um, little 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 seg uh, segments of his story but I have the book only in Czech and I was not really feeling like reading in Czech so I went with the other book but yeah he's definitely and just also as a person really I am really interested in the way he died and the mystery around it because no one really knows what happened and there is just so much mystery about him so I love yeah <laughs> I really want to read some some from him again. Um, thank you, Dami. That was really great. Uh, and and before I go on my tangent, uh, thank my, you, Dami. That was uh, really great. Uh, and uh, and before I go on my tangent, <laughs> my uh, journey. Of course, uh, uh, thanks to guess, uh, thank uh, you to all of you. It was really great. I just didn't want to like uh, interrupt uh, earlier, but yes, uh, all of your uh, all of your um, experiences and like um, uh, things you've shared about the books and how they inspired you and changed you. They've been really lovely. So thank you for that. Um, also about the the uh, the death of Edgar Allan Poe. Actually, it's um, interesting that you've said that. I actually once uh, saw a film, which obviously it didn't answer the question because no one knows the the answer to this question of how he died. But uh, there's like this. I feel like there's like this specific genre of films that uh, answer that uh, sometimes takes like some mystery involved around certain famous like author or something and they try to make a, make up a story of what is the possible thing that happened and it was like this sort of gruesome um, uh, sort of crime and, like, story it was and it was really I don't remember um, what it was called yeah, it, if it, I uh, I can check really it later good, and like send it to you it because really it was actually a pretty good film um, but yeah it, it was it was really good and and it was wow. really interesting so so I think you should check well. it out uh -huh. <laughs> wow That'd be great. If you could yes. think of the name, yes, so they'll be amazing, but I'll definitely search uh, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, <laughs> yes, so I will look for that later. Uh, but 
now about the books, um, for me, a lot of the books that I find meaningful uh, and have imp impacted me the most. I mean, besides Harry Potter series, because of course many of us has, have read it and it is somewhere at the back of our minds. Um, uh, but to, for me, a lot of the books uh, I had to read for, for my school. Um, and actually was quite surprised be, uh, that I would enjoy them because like there's this idea that oh, if you're uh, like forced to read a book then you will not enjoy it at least this is how it was when, uh, with a lot of, when we were like younger or something uh, but for example uh, The Little Prince by Antoine mm, the song Exupery his uh, like the story is just so lovely, so like kind-hearted, like um, I just really, really like thinking about it, and, like thinking about the characters from it and like the quotes from it. It's just uh, so deep, but at the same time, um, it's written in such a simple way that it hits you differently when you're a child and then it hits you completely differently when you're an adult and it's still like so magical like kind-hearted um, and, and still manages to be deep I'd say and like uh, and smart because a lot of like uh, I feel like nowadays a lot of like different uh, different kind of like media are trying to be shocking and aggressive uh, and negative and, and they, to uh, uh, to try to like look smarter uh, or something uh, and, and they uh, treat positive uh, things as the silly and not that deep pretty shallow and naive when it doesn't have to be the case uh, so this is the thing that I, I uh, this is the book that I really liked. Um, I'd say um, other books are Plague by uh, Kami. Um, I I keep thinking about this book quite often, just how how it all happened. Oh, wow, I didn't realize it could be this relevant to our times. Uh, right uh, now, it's like it's interesting. Uh, like also, how, crime and punishment. I uh, I just love like this well, sort of dirty like atmosphere in it. Like, like how there are descriptions of this. Of this. In a way that well, it was like a pretty impressive like city and, like, at the time. The whole but it's described in a way that uh, you feel just how disgusting it is and like with the whole uh, character of uh, of Rodion, of Raskolnikov, it's just, it all combines so well. And I think like this other book that is actually like this Polish book, it's it's a very it's weird kind of thing. Mm, I feel like, like uh, every uh, Polish person, at least at one point, has to read uh, at least some part of it book. because it's not like a chronologically it written one. book. It's, it's sort of abstractish uh, kind of book. It has no part one. It starts end, from part two, then there's part four, um, part three, like and some extra Polish bits like at the end. Hagen it's called Jade. It's about this Polish. It's, sort of like um, this it's like Slavic not even Polish, pagan. like this Slavic pagan um, tradition um, that is sort of like this just, Slavic like it's, pagan it's, uh, it's, Halloween. I, <laughs> um, I just really like. Like and it's, it's just more, uh, it's and like it's uh, 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 it's no sorry uh, I I just really like in like this especially parts, this part uh, it's in part four well uh, right now. no sorry um, in, uh, but it is like especially it's like in in different parts uh, I don't remember like which number it was like right, right now uh, wow. but it is uh, like especially is about like this tradition and like this custom actually of how 
Uh, it, it is night from 31st of uh, October to 1st of November. And it's um, when the when the when the like the barrier between the uh, world of living and dead is very thin, so the ghosts can enter uh, our world. And basically, there's like this whole uh, gathering, like sort of party with food and drinks and other things. And basically, these people, uh, uh, living people, are. Uh, helping the ghosts know, like, to cross over, um, like they offer them something like that will help them cross over, and it's like, uh, I don't know, I just like this, um, and this like atmosphere of it, and how supernatural it feels, how fantastical it feels, and it's like the closest thing that we have to like references to some sort of Slavic folklore. Uh, whenever we learn anything, because uh, we honestly, we we don't learn about like the Slavic mythology uh, and fo uh, folklore that much. Uh, we only learn about the things that happened after like uh, like uh, Poland went Christian and stuff. So I feel like that's fascinating, and it's like a really important bit of history. It's actually a pretty important book, but. But yeah, I, I think done. it's it's really good, and I just really love it. This atmosphere. Oh, that was brilliant. And you um, can hear my I dog say, I would definitely say. Uh, but yeah, thank you. I'm done. <laughs> as many of the books we've mentioned uh, into the chat because I know I want to read a few of them now. I don't know about the people watching, but maybe they do as well. Um, so I think that'd be great to have a, a record of all the books we've mentioned because we have talked about a lot and. Um, one of the ones I mentioned in the chat but didn't mention here was the uh, the Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. I mentioned it in my installation piece earlier, but that book, I read it a while ago, like in high school or something like that, but uh, Miranda uh, recommended I read it again uh, for my project, and I'm so glad I did because I... Um, I uh, saw myself so much in it at the moment because it's all about desperation, mental health, um, and almost being and being quarantined. It's about being stuck in one place, and sl <laughs> it, it's about slowly going mad about everything. She she goes stir crazy, but even beyond that, and it's just such a powerful book. I definitely re recommend reading it because you can easily find it online anywhere. Um, so yeah, that this was a brilliant workshop. Um, any final thoughts on how the workshop went? Yeah, I've really enjoyed it, Rebecca. I mean, I've kind of drifted off to your beautiful voices at points, but that was nothing yeah, else. I've really enjoyed it, Rebecca. I mean, I've kind of drifted off so to your beautiful voice, voices. No, it's, at yeah, points, but that was lovely. nothing I mean, better to drift off to, to than a beautiful more more <laughs> Slovak voice. And uh, like, no, it's yeah, it's been really lovely. I mean, obviously, these kind of things become more interesting the more wide your group is, don't they? Like the more diverse our reading is, <clears throat> the more interesting they become. Um, and maybe giving kind of themes for for us to find books under certain themes before we come to it. That kind of thing. I consider a lot of these, but I thought no, we'll just go with books that inspired you. But no, Wonderful, thank you. Really, really so simple, and thank you. I'm thrilled to get this Agnes Martin book out again. And uh, yeah, wonderful, now? thank you. Yes, so you can. Much. <laughs> yes, you deserve that. Can I go to sleep now? Yes, you deserve that. Yes, you deserve that. Can I go to sleep now? Yes, you deserve that. Sleep, Miranda. Get some. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, yeah, but, I won't, yeah. but I won't actually go to sleep, but I'm going to just go and lie down on the sofa, so I'm going to listen to everything unless I drift off. Yes, that's a good idea. That's what I'm, I've been doing, basically, laying in bed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you've got to keep going with these okay. streams. Anyway, should we sign off at least, and then we can? I'm I'm next, just in case. So. You're next. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. This was a brilliant okay. workshop. Okay. Well, good luck Thank for you the next for attending. Hours. Thank you for holding. Thank you. you. <laughs> good luck, everyone. I have to say, I liked it like this. Hi. It was like it was uh, small and intimate. Yes. yes. Yeah, I think it worked oh, best. Like thank this. you for holding it for us. <laughs> okay, thank you again, everyone. I'm going to stop the stream in. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Yeah.